Super Booth 2019 with Dranalog. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. You didn't get caught in the rain like I did just yet. Oh, it's raining. Don't go outside. Okay. <laughs> but uh, generate free new oscillator with ton of onboard modulation potential. And we were talking a little bit earlier in a similar vein to how Filter 8 really kind of breaks down what a filter is and what can it do. Yeah. Generate free does the same for oscillators, right? That's a general philosophy of of the product. So I guess walk us through it. What is Generate 3? Yeah, so Generate 3, as you said, it's kind of the same approach as Filter 8, looking at okay, what's a filter, what's an oscillator, how do people use it, and what kind of features can, can I add into it or innovate or whatever. So it's, uh, I, I call it a bit more than an oscillator. I call it a uh, universal signal generator or a multiphonic signal generator um, because it doesn't just allow you to have an effect over frequency and some limited effect over timbre, but it allows you to really through zero modulate frequency and phase and amplitude and there's also timbre. So the, all the main aspects of, of a signal can be modulated within, so you can create a signal and modulate all these aspects within the signal module. Yeah, well we can hear in the background and at the start of the video we've got, is it a pair of those in sync at the minute? Lots of modulation going on. Can we maybe pull the patch out and just check out some of the tonal shaping and FM, phase, ring mod-like effects? Yeah, so let's get into it. So first I have to some, some cables to remove. So. so at its heart is a triangle core VCO. Really accurate precision, perfect pitch tracking, basically what you'd expect from a modern VCO. Um, which has also true zero FM. So that allows you to get some cool in your FM sounds. Yeah, great. Let's start with FM. Yeah. So let's start with just regular linear FM. And I take the left generate, I take the triangle to modulate the right one. And uh, we're also listening to the triangle output on the second generate. So this is basically regular linear FM. There is a uh, bias switch which allows you to, to bias the um, the linear FM up so you get into a normal linear range. If I remove the bias then it's going to go around zero. And you get those cool true zero FM sounds everyone? Yeah. <laughs> Super obvious once you remove the bias, that tonal shift in the timbre of the sound. And of course, there's also an AC coupling switch, which is just useful to remove. If you have some DC offset, you can easily remove it. Yeah, it's going to help with keeping tuning stable as well. Yeah, exactly. So it looks like we've, we've a range of different waveform out outputs. Blinking lights have caught my attention. <laughs> We're listening to a triangle. What else is there in terms of outputs? Yeah, so if you look at uh, most oscillator modules, they tend to have the, the, the same approach to, um, to the, the same design approach. So you have a triangle core or saw core, and then you get some wave shaping. So you get a square wave and a pulse wave and a sine wave and so on. And these have different harmonic contents. So you get different timbres. Then you can filter them, so subtractive synthesis basically. Yeah, or distort them, but not much on the oscillator itself. Yeah, exactly. So normally on an oscillator you have frequency modulation, which can be through zero, and you just have some basic effect over the timbre. Yeah. So here I have not just the true zero FM, I also have true zero phase modulation, which we'll get into later. And then I have separate timbral channels. So you have the fundamental channel, which is, it's a sine wave basically. Yep, yep. And then you have all the even harmonics are in one channel and all the odd harmonics are in a channel. So three channels in total. And each of these channels 
can be true zero amplitude modulated. Okay, well let, let's maybe start there. Maybe go for the fundamental. Maybe go for like triangle ring modulating, true zero modulating the level. So now we just have the fundamental. So it's a sine wave basically. And this true zero amplitude modulation, you might hear it, you, you might know it better as ring modulation, balance modulation, for quantum modulation, it's all the same thing. So I take the uh, triangle from the left one and I use it to modulate the fundamental amplitude true zero of the right one. And that's what we're hearing. So it's basically ring modulation. Now, of course, these three timbral channels are also mixed together, and that's the full output. So we can listen to that. And now we hear the combination of the fundamental and the even and odd, but only the fundamental being ring modulated. Yeah. Can we maybe swap that to do uh, modulation of, say, the even harmonics instead? So now we're modulating the even. It just has that stability because odd harmonics aren't moving, the fundamental's not going anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a bit more um, subtle than, than straight ring modulation. And it also allows you to um, modulate separately the three channels. And this doesn't have to be at audio frequency. So you could have three different envelopes going into the three channels and even get some kind of pseudo filtering going on if you... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have uh, the, the fundamental staying longer on during yeah. a note and the... Well, and even uh, harmonics are coming up and down. Yeah, yeah pseudo filter kind of vibe. So there's also phase modulation as the third through zero modulation option. And yeah. does that affect all of, all of the three separate odd even fundamental outs? Yeah, so the phase modulator is... Uh, it's, it comes after the triangle core, it's a separate circuit. So the so FM is right into the core, right? Yeah. And then everything else is downstream. Yeah. So the, the core output isn't affected by the phase modulator, which is also interesting because it allows you to phase shift certain outputs uh, with respect to each other, because the triangle stays at, at a zero point. So let's do some audio frequency phase modulation. So that's phase modulation of the full timbral mix. Or I can do it on um, just the fundamental, for example. Another point that really brings all this to life in terms of stability or possibly musicality, there's a reset sync as well input yeah so you have two types of sync simultaneously there's a reset that's a hard, hard sync. sync yeah and then a flip soft sync yeah and especially when you're doing uh, true zero fm it's a really powerful technique to combine the reset sync and the true zero fm sync because normally well i'll do some true zero again so now we're doing true zero modulation again and you get this inharmonic sound because of the difference in the two frequencies. Which is great for certain stuff like percussive or more noisy kind of thing. Yeah, drones, slowly evolving. But sometimes you want a more stable sound. And then you can both true zero modulate and sync. So now I have both the true zero FM going left to right and I have the reset thing going left to right and you still get this nice deep modulation sound but it's a lot more stable really looking forward to playing with it the filter 8 is a genuine pleasure 
I'm not just saying that because we stood next to each other, but the way that it kind of goes, what is the essence of a filter? What's possible? What would feedback patching give me? What kind of wave shaping could we do if we patch a resonant filter back on itself? Yeah. And all these things are in your manuals as well, I should say, that people should check out. So I think Generate Free is really exciting. We, like, when we saw this earlier, we were talking about how a pair of them, maybe one of your contours would just be a crazy noise box. You could build all sorts of little subsystems around your modules, I feel like. Um, how far off is it? When can people expect yeah. to see it? Kind of how much is it going to be? So late summer, probably September, I hope. It's always difficult to... to it's your ORAC time. Everyone's on your ORAC time in here. Yeah, and I, I try to avoid that. I try to... Be fairly accurate. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, there's some complications in, in assembly or whatever, and I don't want to release anything I'm not really super... Um, super confident in so I'd rather wait I'd rather wait and something be right so I completely get it what kind of price point uh, probably around 350 euro dollar that's around 300 pounds I think okay. so it's it's um, it's a little bit more than the filter because it's also quite a bit more complex so I managed to cram it all in the in the same well, having width. three individual ring mod points and all this other thing I can sit, imagine the panel is very dense at uh, the board is very dense it's it's I, I hand soldered two of them last week, which was interesting, but I'm not going to do it again. No. It's a, and as well, but before that comes out, we've got Contour, which will release as well. Um, can, for those that haven't seen it, can you just speak a little bit about what what Contour is? Yeah, so Contour is it's a voltage controlled slew limiter basically. So there's quite a few of these. It's a, it's a very popular, versatile. It has its history with like the surge dual slopes. Exactly. So it's a really great building block because it's not just a slew limiter, but also an envelope and an LFO and a VCO and yeah. it has all these and all various tricks you can do with it. Um, and I try to try to look at okay, how can I improve this? How can I innovate on this? So uh, that's. I've managed to make some improvements in two main areas. One is the technical, so just the circuit level. Um, it's a lot more temperature stable. Uh, volt proctive tracking you can use as a pretty good oscillator. You have uh, separate voltage controlled rise and fall slope bending, uh, which is also compensated to minimize the time change. There's a dedicated gate input, lots of these things. And the second area of improvement is the ergonomics. So there's, uh, all the controls are on the top, all the sockets are on the bottom, you have LED sliders, there's uh, these... Um, uh, I think it just really speaks to the company in that bringing these things forward and not just saying, I oh, will build an ADSR, we'll yeah. just put out a simple LFO. Yeah. Everything is a kind of building block blown open in yeah. terms of potential. Yeah, and I, I try to really, for me that's what Muller is about really making analog, in my case, analog building blocks, which have a lot of versatility. And once you understand how they work, you can really find new uses for them. And, and people use them in ways I haven't even imagined yeah. because of the versatility. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. Cheers.